Um, I am... I'm rolling. Okay. Well, Seamilk, as we ride through these, um... I don't know. I don't know how to explain this. As we ride through this area, I sometimes often wonder to myself... Is it sometimes or often? I, I, I sometimes often wonder. Oh, okay. That's, so that's, okay. I often wonder, how is it that everybody that lives here isn't depressed? Okay, that's kind of an interesting thing to ask. Because if you look around you, there's a lot of poverty, right? Yeah, yeah, it's poor. Um, that's, that is what it is, but look at the, the pollution and the gray skies. I mean, it's been like this for days. Uh, the relative amount of filth. I mean, look, what we're seeing here is a carbon copy of a third tier, fourth tier Chinese city, yeah. right? Yeah, it looks identical, except it's, for the spiky little French buildings. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you do see little bits of change in architecture. Obviously, the language on the signs is different, yeah. but we could literally be riding through Guangdong at the moment, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. In fact, we can even put up some footage next to this of us riding through Guangdong, and you'll see this exact scene. Um, anyway, how is it that people don't get terribly depressed and just give up on life. Okay, before we get into my psychoanalysis of that, I'll ask, I'm going to ask you a question. All right. What does depression mean to you and have you ever been depressed yourself? Um, well, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I've never been uh, depressed as in clinically depressed or whatever. Sure, you know? sure. I mean, just, I've, you know. I've been in certain uh, bad head spaces, I like to call it, you know, where um, you're just going through a rough period in life and uh, you know, the weird thing is, is that it doesn't happen to me when something tragic happens. Like, you know, like a good friend of mine was murdered in South Africa a couple of years ago. And when I found out that she'd been murdered, especially in the, the brutal way that she was murdered, it affected me and it made me incredibly sad. Uh -huh. But it didn't make me depressed. Okay. I mean, I felt awful for days and angry and all that stuff, but I wasn't depressed. However, I very clearly remember... Um, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. we had a particularly harsh winter in uh, Shenzhen. Yeah. When I say harsh winter, I mean it was cold, but that's not the thing. It was like this, this gray sky stuff. Yeah. Very bad pollution, but it didn't go away for something like a month. Uh -huh. It was literally a month of gray skies, and I just felt like my life was going nowhere, and I felt sure. bad, and I just felt awful, and, and to be honest, I was in a very, very bad headspace. And to me, that's depression, where you just don't feel the motivation to, to continue or right. to, to better yourself, you know what I mean? Right. So that's, that's the answer to that question. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about you? What do you think depression is? I guess I have this weird... Uh, this is hard to be diplomatic about. I have this weird uh, aversion to using that word. Mm. Uh, just because I grew up in America. Yeah, I feel like it's an excuse for a lot of people, isn't sure, it? Sure, it gets thrown around a lot, but I don't want to discount people that actually suffer from, from depression. But that, I feel like it was just thrown around so much and antidepressants were overprescribed and stuff in it. It kind of left a sour taste in my mouth to where I, maybe I have been quite depressed and I just don't admit it. Right, right. And it actually let, it, it affected my life. I, this is probably the first time I'll ever talk about this on camera, to be honest. I, I'm, I guess I was just so opposed to that idea right, that right. I was probably depressed. But looking back on it, if I'm being honest, from your definition, what you just said, um, definitely, definitely has been the case. Um, and I know the feeling. It's like when there's an unresolved problem that causes anxiety in your life, but you know that problem is looming or isn't going to go away, and then it kind of sucks your energy out. So when you wake up and you just realize that you have to go through um, life, and it's just your brain feels like it's in a fog and it's just gray, and it's almost like you get into this negative headspace where you think and you just keep thinking and thinking and you're like maybe for the rest of my life it's just gonna be really sloggy and boring and there's no inspiration to do anything what's the point right and then it gets it gets worse and then you start thinking like 
what do people around me think of me? You know what I mean? Like, what, what's, do I even have purpose? You know? Okay, yeah. And when you don't have something like religion or something in, in life, or like a community, right? It's very easy to fall into that trap, I think, because a lot of people use faith as a way to get out of it. Oh, things are going to get better, right? When you don't believe in that, that doesn't help. And then when you have, you know, maybe you're in a, a place like, let's just mention China, right? Maybe all your friends are away for Chinese New Year or something, and you you just don't feel like you belong. Right. And you're just like, shit, this is kind of sucky. I feel like, yeah, for sure, I've, I've gone through that multiple times. Actually... I think fairly recently, to be honest. Um, okay. So yeah, I think I think depression is a thing. And to go back to the original thing, I think now that we've we've established what we think it is, if you look around here, how could yeah. you not have that feeling, right? Yes. Yes. But you look around, and you see these kids smiling on their bikes. You mm -hmm. see these guys. You know, they don't look. Hello. They don't look miserable, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't. I think it has something to do with the fact that the developed world doesn't feel like it's going somewhere exciting. Uh -huh. And the developing world here, no matter how shit this looks to you right now, no matter how crap the situation is to us and gray and polluted and crap, just about 10 or 20 years ago, these people were knee deep in the mud. So to them, there's places to go. There's places to spend their money, sing some karaoke, buy some sunglasses, eat a bun me, right? Right, it right. It doesn't matter. Look at all the trash with chickens eating out of it on the side of the road. To us, that looks disgusting and sad. Sure, sure. It makes me depressed. Uh-huh. But for them, it's like, you know what? This is, Look at these Tata Motor factories sprung up. I got a job. I get right, to go to freaking right. work, you know? Yep. Yep. It's the first time in their life they can own something. Maybe some at some point they'll have a nice little nice little flat, you know, maybe move to the city. So I think that's probably something we won't understand. You I mean you don't come from a developed country, but you've seen no. development. I have. You've absolutely. been around development and uh, I think we get caught up in the West or Westerners in the fact that maybe every day will be the same unless you do something about it. Whereas here, it's out of your hands. Everything is getting better. It's expanding. Right. It's cool. It's like, wow, it's fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. You get sucked up into it. I got you. I guess that's my answer. What do you think? Well, okay, there's a couple of things um, which I think are pertinent about that. But let's first start out with the fact that uh, the family units here give you a lot of purpose. Okay. Um, with being an individual society uh, in the West, there is a lot of responsibility put on a single person sure. um, to succeed. And over here, I feel like you always are in a position where you have a safety blanket, right. which is your family. Your family will always uh, look out for you. You don't have to worry about um, ever being cast out on the street because even if you don't ever get a job, even if you suck at life, you will still have your role to play in the family, right? That gives you a little bit of something. Um, but actually, you know, you touched on it there, and I think it's actually quite true. When there's a, a wealth of possibility in front of you, in other words, if you start down low somewhere, there's always the possibility to go upward, right? Sure, sure. There's always something to consider that might be possible in the future. But when you are in a, a developed country and you're in a developed situation and you kind of realize um, that you have reached kind of a point where it's very difficult to go any further, right. you know what I mean? Right. I think that's when it's the reality starts to hit you because you stop seeing changes. Right. Right. So when you're in a situation like this, the smallest amount of effort that you put into improving your life, you will see improvements, you know, almost immediately. But uh, like in our current situation, we have to work really hard to, to keep improving um, our outlooks in life, you know, and our, our situation. It's very difficult for us to improve. And I think a lot of people, when they get out of college, they're finished studying, they go out into the workforce, suddenly they realize that, oh, oh my word, this is it. This is me for the rest of my life. And maybe that's when some depression starts to set in. Um, Man, it could be completely polluted. wrong, though. <laughs> it smells so bad out here, yeah. guys. Not to not to spoil this, but it's yeah. freaking polluted. Anyway, um, yeah. there's another little piece of psychoanalysis I wanted to throw yeah. in there. Yeah, uh, some psychologist is going to like rant that we've just misled a whole bunch of people by talking nonsense. Well, <laughs> I actually think there's some truth to this. Okay, you mentioned I think one of the most important things you just said there is the realization that life is hard work. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the reason that's important, look at these little coppers. <laughs> the reason that's important to say is that growing up here, you said there's a safety blanket if you have a family and stuff. That's very true. But what if your family's poor? Because the majority of them are. Right? Sure, sure. It is a unit you will be more comfortable in your suffering. But at the end of the day, you can all still be screwed if you're poor. But being poor sucks, right? Now, look at a society like Vietnam. Look around us. Holy shit. Something what? flew off your bike. And oh, I... a big piece of metal. Yep. What did it hit? And it hit my hand guard. Oh, that's good. That will be on camera. That could have fucked me up. <laughs> that's that's what hand guards are for. That's yeah. awesome. Anyway, yeah. yep. um, going back to that. So you look around at these kids playing here, like I said. They know that now because there is a little bit of money here, right? And there's a little bit of opportunity. Say coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. They uh -huh. know that it does require a massive amount of hard work, right? But they know that the work previously was even harder and more of a slog with less reward. So for us in the West, when we have to have the realization that our, we, need to, we need to work our ass off to have stuff, mm -hmm. but we're also raised in a culture that tells us we deserve everything anyway. Right, right, That's right. gonna create massive amounts of depression and debt and things like that. that when, remember when I said that looming feeling that maybe something in your life is going wrong and you can't deal with it? That's what yes. debt is, right? Debt, debt yes. Debt puts a lot of people into depression, I guarantee it. I mean, that is a feeling of, of prison, in your, a mental prison, right? Correct. So, if you have this culture that says you deserve this TV, you deserve a nice car, put it on lease, finance your house, do all this kind of stuff, right? Oh, yeah. It is a correct system, I think, for for responsible people that have a good head on their shoulders. But it's also a poisonous system that leads to a culture of want, need, and equality when maybe you didn't put in the work to have those things, right? Right. That's right. gonna create a lot of depression. And I don't think that people here think they deserve anything. They know that they have to get that job and put in the work to have that next thing, right? Very, very good. So I think very that's well why said. we're seeing that's why we're seeing smiles in this actual what looks like hell. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not I am not gonna sugarcoat this is a no. really gross and sad and really really horribly polluted place. But if the people around me are are finding success and wealth and happiness in it, then who am I to say anything about that? I'm the I'm the guest here. <coughs> yeah, absolutely right, man. Absolutely right. Um, I don't think there's really much more that could be said about this. Uh, obviously, there is a lot more to be said, right. but not in this episode. We'll continue this uh, at a future time. Sure. Um, right now, is there anything you'd like to tell our subscribers before we sign off? I think. You know, as cliche as it is to say, it's just super, super important that you find something that gives you meaning in life. It doesn't really matter what that is, unless it's like serial killing or something. Um, but finding meaning in your life, doing something as a, a diversion to maybe something that's not, maybe you can't control your situation, right? But find something that's a diversion that gives you meaning and purpose in life. Yeah. Um, I am not a freaking inspirational guru, but I do, I have found a lot of times in my life where I've needed to just take a step back and be like, holy shit, what I'm doing right now is pretty toxic to my mental health. Right, right, um, right. I gotta get out of this shit, right? And sure. whether you have that option or not, just finding, some, finding meaningful relationships and people around you, um, sharing hobbies, getting out and getting past that gray period in your life and finding something to do is 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 medicine in a way right absolutely so is. i mean anyway let me know down in the comments what's your advice to people that are going through a tough time you know maybe people that have chronic depression so let me know what you what you've learned throughout your life and uh you know subscribe to us if you want to see more kind of this kind of stuff we don't always talk about this kind of deep stuff we usually do cultural stuff but i think that was a an important topic sure and sure. uh Give us a like if you did enjoy the video, or give us a downvote if you think what we just said was absolute bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please do. Um, you know, the, my, my catchphrase that uh, I always say at the end of my videos, stay awesome. Uh. Um, the reason why I came up with that is, well, there's a video about it, but it's very, very long time ago. It's just to help a friend of mine through a tough spot. Right. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> nice. Um, when you are going through a depression or a bad spot in your life, the, the only thing you can do is tough it out. 
uh, whichever way you find to cope with that depression, the whole point is to get through it. Um, and I know this from having suffered some pretty big losses, you know, like my brother died when I was 13 years old. Um, I've had friends die, you know, I've lost people close to me. That's probably the toughest thing to deal with, to be honest. I'm gonna stop um, being your friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just quickly swerve into traffic, please. You know, <laughs> just keep this narrative going. <laughs> anyway, no, the, the, the thing is, right, you eventually get over it. Yeah. Maybe not fully, but you get over it, the bad, bad, bad parts. You get through it. And that's why I say stay awesome, because just remember, if you are awesome, if you stay awesome, you can get through the tough stuff and uh, the better times come. Absolutely. You know? Anyway, I guess that's all we have to say. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, you know, whether you're depressed or not, we love you all the same. And uh, as always, honestly, just stay awesome. Don't forget, guys, every single Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, go watch ADV China. You can actually watch another one right here. Every single Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, go check out Loudy 6. And right below that, you can watch Serpents Today every single Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks.